right, so we have cut out our pattern pieces on our Cricut. It was very fast, efficient. I actually think it was faster to cut out the uh, pieces on the Cricut than by hand, which is always nice. So let's just do a quick, quick review of where we are. So we have our two bottom pieces with the little big cutout. And we have our two top pieces. Remember on the fabric, we already interface it with uh, woven views or SF101, and then we cut it on the Cricut with the uh, interfacing attached. And then afterwards, I fused a piece of trim down Decoville Light because I want this fabric to kind of have a similar weight to the vinyl on the bottom. So it's still a little bit lighter weight, but it gives it more, I think, a balance. So. Um, so those are those two pieces. I do have this mount for the top to make sure I don't get them mixed up by accident. And I have marked them for the front and the back as well because I found that when I cut it out, I'd rather have these little off flowers be the front instead of these two center flowers. So that was not intentional, but the center flowers will go in the back. And we have our cute little slip pocket. Again, we cut this out on the Cricut. It was already interfaced. I inter added interfacing Decavel light. One small piece just around on one side and trimmed down too. I like my slip pockets to have a little bit more weight. So we'll do that. And we have our two lining pieces. Very cute. Again, after I cut these out on the Cricut, I went ahead and fused a trimmed down piece of thermal lamb fleece to the back of each piece. That will give it some uh, nice padding. So a little different than the pattern. You can follow the pattern if you'd like, but I think you might enjoy learning some uh, different approaches. So um, you'll notice on the lining piece here that I did not have the pleats because I think it's a little bit of extra time to go ahead and add these pleats when it fits just fine in the bag without and why have the extra work. So that's why we have this piece different. Uh, let's see, so let me just show you the hardware before we start sewing up this cute little bag. Okay, so now I've done some things in advance because you've seen me do it a few times so I don't want to make you get bored. So first we have the wristlet. Now the pattern calls for, I think it's 5 eighths. Um, Make what you like, but I like a three-quarter inch. So I have three-quarter inch D-ring, not D-ring, lobster ring. And my strap is actually about 12 and a half inches long versus I think it called for 14 or 15. Um, so you're going to cut your strap three inches to achieve the three-quarter inch width that I like. But you can uh, do whatever you prefer. That's my favorite. I went ahead and made it. Again, I will link to how to make this. Uh, wristlet in the video, but you probably know how to do it already. And actually the pattern covers it just fine. I also prefer a smaller D-ring. This is a half inch, so therefore you're going to want to use just one inch piece of vinyl, fold it together, top stitch, and then you have your little D-ring connector. I like, I don't ha like having the big old, big old connectors hanging out of the bag. That's just me. And we have our zipper. Now we're going to do our zipper a little bit different. Um, we only going to have one zipper tab, if you will, and I like to do my zipper with the butterfly way. So you're going to have a 10 inch zipper, you're going to butterfly one inch, you'll put the skinny tab on this end to end up with a 9 inch zipper from head to toe. So I will link again how to uh, do the butterfly, how to make the skinny tab uh, that I've done in previous videos so that um, you're not Again, watching me do the same thing over and over again. And if you have a batch for your bag, let me get one of those ready. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our slip pocket. We're going to sew it right sides together. And I like to do things a little bit different. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew from the bottom, a little jog all the way around the top to the about oh maybe two inches. Leave a two inch opening and you're going to turn through that opening, give it a good press, and then we'll top stitch the top. And when we get done with that, we will 
attach it to our lining piece here. So it would be so cute, like so. And then we will proceed to attach the uh, zipper and the lining to the top pieces here. We're not going to attach our base pieces until almost the very end, and um, I will show you why. You think it's kind of cool. So um, I think that is it for now. We're going to just do some little, some basic sewing. So when I come back, I'll have the slip pocket attached to the piece of lining, and we will go ahead and proceed with attaching the zipper. So I'll see you in a bit. So we're ready to do some sewing. First thing you're going to need is the top front of your bag. Put that in front of you. You're going to need your prepared zipper with the skinny zipper tab. This is, like I said, nine inches long from end to end. You're going to put this face down on the top and you're going to start it at three quarters of an inch in. And you're going to just clip it in place all the way from one end to the other. Make sure that you are not pulling on the zipper tape. You want to keep it, just put it, let it follow the natural shape of the top of the bag. Like so. One more clip. Let's see. Like so. So very standard. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to, this is how I like to do it. I like to base the zipper on with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Then when I do that, I'm going to take my lining piece, and we want the one that is the front that has no pocket. This one is the pocket, and it'll go in the back, or whatever you prefer. I like it in the back. So once you base this on, you're going to then take your lining and place it on top, and line up the edges, clip it all back in place, and you're going to sew this with a precise quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you start exactly one quarter inch from this end and you add ex and you end exactly at one quarter inch this end because we do this bag a little bit differently than the instructions and we want those uh, lines to line up in the end. Actually, that's a top stitching line, but it's still a good practice. So exact same allowances will always ensure that your zipper tape will not be wavy. So once you have done that, you're going to repeat it for the other side of the zipper tape and after that we will talk about top stitching and we'll come back and I think we'll do that together. But this part I'm just going to show you, um, I'll go ahead and sew it myself and I won't uh, film that and then we'll come back and do some top stitching together. Alright, making good progress. Okay, so I have attached the zipper and the lining to both sides and before we top stitch I want to give you a little method to my madness, and that is why we did not attach the bottom strip just yet. And the reason I learned is because at this point in time now, we want to unzip our work and take her to the ironing board and give her a really good press, pull the front away from the zipper tape, do the same for the lining piece, and just, you want to be able to press her. But in my experience, in my younger days, Sometimes I accidentally have nicked my vinyl with the iron and all my work for naught. So just a little tip for you. Maybe uh, the more advanced sewers can skip it, but I thought it was a good tip. Um, you do have a vinyl zipper tab right here, so take caution with that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, or you're going to, take your pieces to the ironing board, give them a good press, and then we're going to get ready to top stitch. For top stitching, we're only going to top stitch through the front layer and the seam allowance. We're not going to catch the lining because you'll find that it'll turn nicer. So go to the ironing board, get it pressed. I will do one top stitch and then I'll do one 
with you and then we will be able to then next attach the base. So looking good. All right, see you at the machine. So I have top stitched the first side and what we're going to do now is open up the bag. I have a four and a half inch stitch length. We're sewing on my trusty Juki 8700 and all we're going to do is open up the bag, pull the lining away from the bag. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use my edge of my zipper mm -hmm. foot here and we're just going to follow the seam and top stitch. Remember we're top stitching only through the seam allowance, not through the lining. And just take it slow. Make sure you start and stop at the exact same seam allowance. And we are coming to the end. Make sure everything's nice and smooth. And that is it. Cut off our threads. And we have beautiful top stitching. So this is going to be the front of our bag. That's the back of our bag. So we're going to go back to our desk and we are going to put our name plaque on either the front or the back. Um, and we're going to attach the two bottoms. So I will do that at my desk as far as pinning them in place. And, uh, and then we will sew them, do some top stitching at our connector. We are making fantastic progress. So I'll see you back in a second. Bye. So I have attached my badge and the first piece of the bottom to the front of the bag. And we are going to complete the back of the bag together. So we're just going to bring this over here like so. Okay. And we're going to take the bottom of the of the, the bottom piece, if you will. And we're going to flip it up so they are right sides together, like so. And using some clips. Isn't that cute? That's the new bag by Anne. So simple, so cute. Okay, so we have clips. So you're going to clip right sides together. You're just going to follow the curve and you want to leave a tiny little triangle sticking out of the side. And you're going to do that both sides first, like so. And then we're going to just clip it in place. Don't pull it. Keep it nice. And let it ease in place. It'll fit perfectly. So, a lot of people get confused about sewing on a curve, but actually it's quite a, a natural thing for fabric to want to do this, and uh, it's fun. Okay. All right, so we have attached the bottom of our piece to the back front of our bag, like so, and we're going to go to the sewing machine. We're going to sew this with a 3 8 7 inch seam allowance, and then we're going to flip it open with the seam going towards the bottom, and we're going to top stitch with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. We're going to close up our pleats, and that should conclude the next segment of our video. So come on over to the sewing machine with me. So we're now ready to stitch the bottom to the top. We're using a uh, 3 8 7 inch, I think it's called a compensating foot, but it's just 
very nice weight. I don't have an edge foot, so we use the compensating foot. And we're just going to follow the edge and sew the seam allowance. Hopefully you can see pretty good. I moved the camera angle. Still getting better every day. I'm trying. Make sure the edges are aligned. I love this foot because three eighths of a and seam allowance is very common and precision is important in many aspects of our bag making. Sometimes it's not important, but when it comes to seam allowances, I believe it is. Okay, so we've sewn that cute little short seam. Up next, we're going to top stitch. So. Move this out of the way. We're going to change this foot to my one eighth of an inch edge foot. This is Teflon because we're going to be sewing on top of vinyl. So we come here, pop it on, put the thread through. Need to cut it. You know, some people complain, rightfully so, that the silver thread ravels and then it's hard to manage but really it's just a question of how fast you pull it off the needle and cutting it you want to make sure you cut it straight and not at an angle so it's a small inconvenience at least for me it is okay. so put the thread through the hole we're going to change our stitch length to four and a half and now we are we have this in this direction we're going to put the edge of the Teflon foot right against the seam. We have our seam beneath us. Basically, we're doing what's called pink edge stitching. And we are at four and a half, we're going. We get to the back stitch. And then we're just going to let the foot glide along the edge. Kind of pull it away from itself. That's it for our top mm -hmm. stitching. Looks nice. I think you can see it. No, it's a little bit dark, but anyhow, looks really good. So what's next is we're going to change our foot one last time. Put on our super foot. Actually, this is the foot I always use. It's a uh, narrow hinge. It's kind of an elongated zipper foot. I don't know where I got it. I'd like to find out. I'd like to have a spare, but one day. Okay, so put, or you put your threads behind you. I'm gonna go back to a three and a half. Now we're gonna fold these two little pleats together so that they are even within themselves. Put a clip. Do this side. Just clip them together so that they are a straight line. And we're going to sew about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I like to start at the top of the point here and make sure that you sew past where you have the point. Otherwise, the point will be raw. We don't want that. And then back stitch at the top as well. I don't trim these little pleats. They don't need any less stress. Now we're going to do this side again. About an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And you're going to sew 
your threads behind you and you're going to sew past the pleat line or the point. is now done. It's pretty. Our pleats are done. All that's left to do now is add the D-ring over here if we want. You can't see it. Over here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Add the D-ring and then uh, put it together. However, I have decided that I prefer to put the wristlet actually on this zipper pull instead of putting it on a D-ring. So even though I made it I have decided not to add the D-ring. That way it can be a wristlet, it can be a clutch. I think uh, just more options that way. So that is it. I'm going to clip her together. I'm going to sew the bag together. And I think you know how to do that, but I might show you anyhow. We'll see. Thanks everybody, bye. So I have clipped the uh, bag all the way around. I've opened the center zipper and we have left uh, open image, open area about oh seven inches here. So we're going to sew the perimeter. And we always start with our little jog, if you will. We're just going to go up. And then we're going to sew around. Now the same allowance is 3 eighths of an inch, so we'll do maybe about a half an inch on the lining. You can follow the shape of the fleece or your bag. You know how to do this. So we're just going to take a little bit larger seam allowance so that it fits more nicely in the bag. And then as we get up here, we're going to make sure this is not buggered up in any way. We're going to do a small pivot, and now we're doing the more of a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. You could use your foot if you want to. At this point in time, I know how to eyeball it pretty well. You do want to take great care to follow the shape. Also, on my uh, pleats here, I have nested them like we do in quilting, so that they are uh, opposite of each other, so that there's not a lot of bulk and they just will fit nicer. If you want, you can backstitch over that little area just to kind of reinforce it. And we're just taking the seam allowance. Coming to our next pleat. Following the shape of the bag. Again, making sure that there's no puckering or anything at the where the zipper is joining. And now we're gonna come on down to the other side of the lining. Gradually increase to a half inch. And we'll stop right about there. Complete our little job. And that is that. If you ever wonder why we do this little jog thing here, if I can show you this here and here, is because when we turn the bag, this little open area will naturally give us a seam allowance that we can easily fold under and then stitch, whether you do it by hand or on the machine. So that's why we do the little joggy thing here. So all that's left now is to 
trim the bag, the seam allowances, turn the bag, and maybe I'll close up the, the gap here, and that's it. Like I said, I have chosen not to add the uh, wristlet D-ring on the side because I just think it looks nicer sometimes. Um, so that's it. The next time you see this bag, it will be done. Yay!